Okay, hi everyone. I'm Nikki and I teach classes on making modern class books and I've had a lot of people asking for video. So this is for people who have taken my class and know how to make this. If this is your first time trying to make it, you may or may not be able to understand. Um, but I, you can ask me if you have questions. Um, so, when I tell people to, they're going to make them for themselves, I always tell them to measure yourself. So, I tell them to measure from the top of your shoulder down to the length that you want it. And make sure you're not looking down, because if you look down, it's going to go further down. So, I typically make mine 27 inches. Make sure when you're measuring, you're measuring over your, oops, measuring over your bust. Um, and that gives you your length. For the modern, because it's only, I like mine to end up, this is funny, I like mine to end up before the um, elbow, so I go from my, the center to here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to this, it's off. So, but what I tell people is you measure from your center and you go out this way, and then what I tell people is if you have somebody to help you to go down and put your arm down and you can see because it'll be longer. So like that, when I measured mine out this way, it was 18. And then when I go this way, I measure down over my shoulders and down my arm. It's about 20. So I go about 19. So that's going to be the measurement from here, the center, to the edge of your sleeve and to your arm. And today I'm making a small... And I use bus belts to make patterns. You can use a shirt. Oops. You can use a shirt or you can use something else, um, a sweater. So I always tell people to turn them inside out because you need them to see, to be able to see the seams. And so I always tell everyone if you're going to use a shirt, a sweater, a bus belt, an old one, turn it inside out and make sure that it's nice and neat. Um, I know my measurements, but if you wanted to make it specific for your body, I tell people to measure your bust and write it down and then measure your hips and mark that down. And then you can do your waist as well if you want to. I typically just go based on your bust and your hips. So I'm using an old bust book to use as my pattern. And I've already pre-ironed my fabric so that it's easier to do. I typically don't iron my fabric, but um, for this case, I did. I have a pocket that I like to use. So this is my pocket pattern. Um, my pockets are usually about 15 inches tall and then about 10 inches wide. So then it's like 20 and 15. So however you want to do it, um, you can make a pocket however you desire. I like bigger pockets, but some people like smaller pockets. So the trick to doing this is in the folding. And so I've already ironed it the way that I needed it. But when this fabric came, usually you buy your fabric and it's like this, right? This way. So this is exactly what I need it folded. But if you're going based off your measurement down, what you're gonna end up doing is I tell people to fold it down this way to the length that you want it. And I'll show you an example because like I said, this is at 27 going down and this is gonna be my body. But let me show you what if I'm using different fabric. Okay, so I like to go 27 down. There's a bunch of fabric in here, right? So what I like to do so I'll fold this down. So I have to do this in sections. But so here's what I'll end up doing. I'm going to fold this down to the length that I need it. And this guy's a little bit long, so I'm going to fold this down to where I want it. This is about, let's see, okay, there we go. So 28. 
I like to make them a little bit longer if I'm making larger sizes. If I'm making the smaller sizes, I make them a little bit. So this is what I've got. I, this is the 27. Sorry. The, So this is the 27, and that's the length, and that was what I was just showing you with the other one. So now that I've shown you how to cut it to your length if you have extra fabric, that works. So this is my 27, okay? So the trick is to folding it, right? So you're going to want to open it all the way up, and what I tell people in my class is you're going to fold it hamburger style, right? So fold it down hamburger style, and then... What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this, this part. You're going to end up with one piece for the body. So this part is going to go over this way. I don't know if you can see. I'm trying to fix the camera. This is a little difficult with just me and my laptop, but it's going to work. So we're going to fold this over. So then I fold it over this way. And this is where that measurement from the center of your body to the center of your arm or the where your arm comes in. So this would be like I said mine is 19. So this would be we could fold it out to 19. So if you're using a pattern, it's really bright in here. Hopefully you can see. If you're using a pattern, you're going to put it over just like that, just to the sleeves. And because I don't wash my fabric, I always just leave a little extra and just cut it just a little bit extra. So once you've got it matched, if you're using a shirt as a pattern, you're going to want to make sure that you leave seam allowance. So I like to curve mine at the bottom. What you want to make sure is you don't start curving here in the center. What happens is if it comes in, it'll come up like this. So if you're going to curve it, I usually cut it straight across here, and then you can add your curve in. And I'm making this one a small. So like I said, I cut it a little bit bigger, allow for seam allowance. And then you just cut. Perfect. And I will show you how to do this part. So if you look, I cut it. I can't really tell. It's really bright in here. Um, I cut a little bit extra. So then, now we do the neck part. Let me see if I can do it this way. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. So here's the neck part. So. What I was taught is you do two thumbs, okay, and then you make a snip, and I tell people, and this is where I get people confused, so when you're doing your neck part, you want to look straight ahead, and the edge of your jawbone here, to your clavicle, your collarbone, that's this, right? So this move, and don't look away, because it'll be off, but this move is here, and then this goes here. And so then I'm just going to cut up to there. Some people have really long necks. Some people have short necks. So it just depends. So there's that. And then you've got a body. Okay? And then you have to throw it over your head and make sure it fits off and on and off and on and then you have to pick a front so you have to do one more thumb and this way I tell people fold it hot dog way so then you fold it down this way see if you can see and it goes like this and you match the seams and then one side and you do one more thumb. 
So you do one thumb and you do the width of that thumb going up to that piece. So now you've got a body of your chespa and it's one piece. Oops. Let's see. I'm trying to show you. Yeah, we're going to have to fix this. your front and your back and then you've got to cut your pocket out so because I'm using the end of the pockets my pocket's going to be a little bit shorter, but what I tell people is then you're going to lay this bad boy onto here, so, and then, and so like I said, this, I ran out of fabric, so for this one, I'm just using the other side of it. Okay. Here's your pocket, just just a little small one. So, and then I line my pockets because I'm not a fan of ironing. So, I will lay the other side of this guy and put my pockets here. And when I line my pockets, I like to leave a little extra space and I'll trim it up when I'm done. So I'll throw a few pins in and show you what I mean by that. So this is what you end up with. Let's see if I have a better idea. There we go. Oops. So there. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna sew all the way around and I like to leave an opening on the side here, not in the middle not on the side, not on top, not here. So I like to leave it here. And I typically use my foot. i bring it in my sewing machine. I typically use my foot, the edge of my foot as my guide. So I'll just go ahead and whip this out. I'm gonna back stitch. Um, I'm using my travel sewing machine because my big nice one is needs to go to the doctor. So I'm just gonna put this on. And if you're not familiar with corners, I don't know if you can tell, you can't really see, it's too bright. I leave my needle in, and then I pick my foot up, and I spin this guy around.
else. So here we've got our pocket and I'm gonna open it up. I like to trim the corner up a little so that it's easier to turn. And then after this, we turn it around and iron it out nice and flat. You don't have to sew the hole shut because when you sew your fuss belt onto the body, that actually ends up getting sewn shut. Um, I just tell people to sew kind of close to the edge when you're putting your fuss belt on. Um, yeah. So I like to leave a little lip here. Let's see, I'll do a better one. A little lip there. So that when I turn it around, that you'll see. So step back. If you make it too small, you might have a hard time pushing it through. If you make it too big, that's okay. That works. Um, for the trimming, I like to use extra wide. What is it called? Extra wide double fold bias tape. <clears throat> bias tape, extra wide double fold. Uh, I'm sure if I, you can make it. Um, I just have limited time with my stinker on sewing. So like for now she's sleeping. So we got a little bit of time. But, so I'm gonna use the black along with the bias tape, so eh, bias tape maxi piping. So I like to use that. Um, and then there's a trick to using it. If you're not familiar with it, that bias tape has a short side and a wrong side, um, or a short side and a long side. So yeah. So here we have our little cute pocket. I'm gonna go iron it real quick. And so, can't really tell that there's a hole. All right, so bias tape. So, like I said, bias tape has a short side and a long side. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell in this video, but let me see if I can show you. Yeah, I don't think it's possible. But with the short side, you can see the both of them with the long side, you can't. So this side is the short side and we're gonna go ahead and sew this on. So on the back side of your pocket, whichever one is your back, sometimes it's difficult to tell, you're gonna take this guy and you're gonna open it up all the way. I don't know if you can tell. You're gonna open it up all the way. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. So you open it up all the way. Yeah, that's still not great. So you're just gonna have to trust me. If you remember from class, this guy gets opened up all the way. This side is still folded. This the short side gets sewn on the back side, and I believe this is. Yes, this is my back. So the short side gets open, you leave a tail, and I'll show you what I mean by that. <clears throat> and you just sew it, no reverse stitching. Okay. And then you're gonna trim it, and then this is what I mean by a tail tail and a tail so that when you sew it onto your body this gets folded over. So you're going to do it to the other side as well. I don't change any of my threads right now. Um, I will change my top thread to black because navy is on right now but you will change 
your top thread um, to match the bias. I don't necessarily change it when I'm sewing it on the pocket, but if I am sewing with like black bias and I have white in my bobbin, I will change that color to match. Um, if it's a similar color, like in my bias right now, there's navy, I won't change it. Um, you won't really see a difference. So, just change the patterns. All right, so piping. Uh, you can tell I think on this one. See, this is the back and this is the front. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to hide this front in here and leave a little tail and sew it down. I'll sew one side down and I'll show you by what I mean by that. You put the front up and then you sew as kind of close to the edge as possible. So these steps you're going to do as well onto the bottom. So there you go. You kind of hide it in there. You can kind of see a little bit there, but you're going to do that on the other side. You're going to also do this on the bottom of your us book, and you'll do the same with the piping. Now we've got our pocket trimmed up. And then what I tell people is to iron this bad boy in half so you know where to pin it onto the body of your husk And now you've got a line. Perfect. Now we're going to do this to the bottom. But what happened when I was cutting this was the fabric was not even. So now I've got to iron this bad boy in half and trim it up. So I'll do that first. But right now I'm just going to iron this guy in half. I just kind of want to make all the holes even. Now it's in half and I've got my line and the reason that we have this line is so that you can match the center to the center and you pin, 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 but I'll show you that once we get there. Okay, so this fabric wasn't straight when I got it. Oh, you can tell at the bottom, oh, it's really hard. It's too sunny in my sewing room, but we're just gonna, I'm gonna straighten this bad boy out. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to do the same with the bias onto the body. So the on the wrong side, the inside of the body, you'll do the short side on the inside. And if I could show you, there's a YouTube video out there. Maybe I can find it on how to sew on bias because it's really hard to see with this darn sun. 
but you're going to open it up again and you're going to do the short side on the back side. And I think I will do that. I'll share a video on the how to sew on bias. You don't need a back stitch when you first start. Just leave a little tail just like you did on the body or on the pocket. I don't pin, but if you want to pin, you're more than welcome to. Um, I've just gotten so used to doing this that I can guide it as I'm sewing. Okay. You are going to leave a little tail. We'll do the same on the other side, and then we'll put the piping in. And then after we get the piping in, we sew the pocket on. Then you sew the body closed, and then you cut your knit, sew your knit, and add it on. some really cool bias tape makers out there that you can buy. They're kind of old school and you just feed the fabric into them and it makes the bias for you. Um, they're kind of expensive but if you like a lot of bias they're kind of worth the investment or you can buy the bias makers online. That's not loud enough. They have bias makers online that you can purchase and make bias at home. So, um, like I said, I'm just limited in the time that I have. My daughter will be two on the 25th of this month. So, if you have kids, you know that that's a fun, this is a fun stage right now. So, but, all right. And I'll show you what I did. This is exactly like what we did with the, on the pocket. If you want to, you can hide rickrack in here as well. Or you can hide another, like, if you wanted to hide another bias in here, you can hide another bias in there as well. Or um, a fancy, fancy stitching. You can also do moderns with a hood, like a cross hood, or I have people have had made them out of um, knit. Just depends on your liking. And I have made a video on traditional, but I was it made it a long time ago, and it was with um, it was with a pattern. So, but I just have had a lot of people. In my class requesting that I do this so and like I said if you haven't taken my class it might be a little confusing but if you want to give it a shot and if you have questions you can always send me a message I do periodically teach classes um, if I have enough interest and I do like traveling around the state of Alaska. So if your community is interested in a modern class, you can all send me an email at soyupic at gmail.com. Um, we can see what we can do.
I have a serger that I use for my knits. But if you don't have a serger, you can always use your sewing machine. Um, you would just have to look up the manual to see what type of stitching you would have to use for the um, sewing on knits. got all of our trimmings on so we're gonna put our pocket on I'm gonna take my socks off it's really hot in my sewing room okay so now you want to make sure that you're gonna pin your pocket onto the front of your body and not the back so here's my front okay what I tell people is to lay out your fuss book down on the wherever your hard surface is, open it up and pin it on. Um, you want to be careful that you're not pinning it like right here on your amoks or you don't want it too low. You kind of want it just like where your hands feel comfortable. Um, I always tell gals, if you have large amoks, which are boobs, you have to be careful in that you don't have a real skinny pocket. Let me see if I can show you. You, have, you don't want to have a real skinny pocket so that kind of looks like your amoks are like popping out, if that makes sense. And if you've taken my class, you know what I'm talking about. So I like to open it up flat and I'm going to lay this down so you can see like this. Okay, perfect. So this is the front. It's real sunny in here, so sorry. There's my center. What I'm going to do is I like to pin it and usually... I've got big monkey arms, so I usually pin mine a little bit lower, but um, not everyone has monkey arms like me. So I kind of like to measure using my hand from the neck down, and you pin the top, you pin the bottom, and then just kind of pin the sides, and I tell ladies to throw it over their head and see how it fits. If you need to adjust it, you can always move it up and down. So just depends. So once you kind of get it pinned on, make sure you don't sew with the whole your hands where your hands go. And then make sure that this is right on your shoulders so that you know. So okay. So there. And just kind of put your hands in. I might move it down a little bit, just a tad, because it feels kind of high. So, also, it's kind of right here. The only reason I say not to put it right on your amoks is because when these things get pointed down, it kind of leaves a little bump. So, I'm going to move this down just a little bit. Okay. Then, once you've got it pinned to where you like it, you're just going to sew it on. Okay. Just a little bit. Perfect. So, like I said, pin the center first, top and bottom. Oops. And then you just kind of pin the two sides. And then you want to remember that you've got your hole. So, like, here's my hole. I'm going to just kind of sew as close to the edge as possible. This is where you also want to make sure that your thread matches the top of your fuss box. It doesn't necessarily need to match the top of your bias, but you want to make sure that it matches your what you call your bias oops so I like to start on the let's see, I'll show you before I start I like to start on the one side let me see this is gonna go in this way okay I like to sew on this side so when you start you're gonna fold this in ah, there and you fold that part in and you're gonna back stitch because you want to reinforce your stitches and making sure that you're reversing because if you don't reverse 
it might, your stitches may come out. So fold the side in and I always put my needle in and start and go, start and go. I do it a few times and then just sew all the way around. This seems really fast. Um, I, don't know. I can try and slow down, but it's kind of hard for me. So, same on the other side. Back and forth, back and forth, reinforcing it. Okay, then we're going to slide. It in and you're going to sew this top half here. This camera doesn't do it justice, but you're going to sew this guy down and you're going to fold the top down. Your extra biases. Don't trim them because um, you'll have a hard time folding it over. Same with this, back and forth. Don't sew over pins if you've never sewn over them before because they can shatter and go in your eyes. I have had needles shatter on me when I've sewn over sewing pins. Luckily, I've had my glasses on, so they just reflected off of that. So just be careful. I'm just so used to it now, I just sew over them. But don't do that if you're not used to it. And then you can trim everything when you're done. So. so now we've got our pocket on. Okay? It's on the front. Perfect. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take both sides and you're gonna sew it shut from your sleeve up here, all the way down, down to the bottom, and you're gonna back stitch at the top and the bottom. Okay. For this, I won't use my serger just so I can show you, but I usually use my serger on this part and then as well as, I will use it for the knit though. Okay. Like I said, I use my foot as my guide. Let's see if I can show you, just like that. Maybe that's a better thing. Hopefully that makes sense. Backstitch. one side to the other.
Didn't run out of bobbin. Love it. Okay, now we're going to cut our knit. So, the knit that I have is, let's see, four way or two way. So, this is what we've got. Yay! I will trim these corners, both sides, just kind of trim the edges off. So, now what I tell people is, let's see if I can show you at a different angle so it's better. Okay, there we go. So now what I tell people is to measure your neck hole opening. And you want to measure it on the curve. So take one side and measure the back. So that's 12 and a half. And you take the front and you just measure on the same curve. The numbers aren't going to be the same, so I tell people to do both sides. So 12 and a half and 14 and a half, that's 26, 27. So um, I like to do probably about 25, so I'll shrink it down two inches. Just depends on how big of a neck hole you make it, you shrink it down. Um, you don't want to make it too small because it'll feel like a turtleneck, but you don't want to make it too big. Then what I tell people to do is you measure the opening of your armhole. So this is six and a half. So I'm going to do this probably five and a quarter. Because it, I'm making it a small, um, I'm shrinking it down that much. But it just depends on what size you're making. Um, like for example, for 2XL, I like to taper mine down. So now that we've got our measurements, I like to make my cowl height between 12 to 14. And so what that means is you're going to end up making two, a tube. So this guy, let's see, let's see if I can show you. This guy is, so stretch it one way. Stretch the other way. Stretch here this way. So when I'm doing my neck hole, this side. When I'm doing my neck hole, I want the stretchiest part to be this way. Okay. So you're gonna. When I said 12 to 14, this is where you're gonna fold it up. So I'm gonna fold this guy. I'm going to fold this guy up. Let's see. I'll measure that. I don't know if you can see me if this angle is better. So that's 14 and a half. So I'm going to shrink it down just a little. If you want it really tall, make it tall. But what it ends up being, it's going to end up being, that's 14. So it's, end up gonna, it's going to end up being 28. But you want to make it a 2. So this way... It's going to be 25 because I shrunk it down. So 25 and just trim, cut it. Um, cutting knit, it's not going to be perfect. So um, don't try and make it perfect and match up. Um, you're not going to even notice. So there's my neck hole. I'll show you when we cut, when we sew, but I'm going to cut my sleeves out now. Um, if you've got two-way stretch, you want to be careful that when you're cutting out the sleeves that the stretchiest part is going to go around your arm. So this way is stretchier. And I like to make my sleeves about 7 inches in length going down. So that's going to be 14. You're going to make a tube. This guy is going to go up five and a quarter. Okay. And at 14, I'll do 14 and a half. 14 and a half, I'm going to trim it. So this is one sleeve. And I don't know if you can tell, but I folded it so that it's doubled. We're going to do it again on this one. And I just tell people, fold it up, lay your other sleeve down like this. Over it. For this, I'm going to use my serger, but with your sewing machine, you can do this part. Um, 
and I showed you in class if you're in my class, um, but I'll show you how to sew it on the server. So I'm going to take all the pieces. I'll come over to my server. behind me. So just for terminology, the correct word is less book. Less book is two, the K indicating two, and the less book is three or more. The term less book came from non-Yupik speakers not being able to pronounce the word less book because it's very guttural. Uh, I tell people it's back here. So um, if you're from up north, they call them atikluk. Um, and then there's another word for them interior. So this is 25, right? So we're going to make a tube. So you're going to take the two ends and you're going to sew it down. I'm going to sew this with my serger. Oh, Sydney touched my serger. <laughs> I'm going to have to sew this down with my sewing machine. <laughs> to reinforce this. <laughs> my daughter likes to play with the dials on this machine, so sometimes they're kind of off. <laughs> Typically, that's not how what it's supposed to look like. So I'm going to have to sew this down with my sewing machine. So I will show you how to do that. Let me do this one first with my sleeves. Okay. I'm going to have to open a window. Okay. All right. So sleeves. You're going to take, fold them, and you're going to sew it down. It's not how it's supposed to look. Uh, Sid was playing with my serger, so I'm going to have to reinforce these on the sewing machine. Okay. So, and I will show you how to do that. When you sew these on your sewing machine, you have to be careful not to start at the very beginning. For some reason, mine doesn't like to start at the beginning, so I kind of have to start in a little and then go. can reverse at the end, but I, I will just end up using a straight stitch on this. Um, you might have a serger stitch or a specific stitch to use on your machine. And then I just come back around from the other side and I will do the back stitch just to reinforce it. So your machine might start from the beginning, I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to just sew all these and then then we'll turn them all around, and this is where some people have a little tough time turning them around. 
so I will just sew right here like where the surged end is. If you're sewing these on your machine, you can just use your foot as a guide. Okay. Same on this guy, just come back around and do the back stitch to reinforce it. Turn them all around. Let me see if I can find a better spot where it's not so bright. Okay, so now we've got tubes, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and take the other side and make it in a tube like this. And it's super bright, but there's my cowl for the neck. And then same with the sleeves. You're going to take and put your hand in there. Where's it? Right there. And you're going to pull it this way. Oh, this darn sun. So now you've got a tube. This is the other side. Alright, so when I'm putting the cowl on, and if you're putting a hood on, on your bus book, um, you're going to leave your bus bunk turned inside out. And I'll come over to my serger. Maybe that's better. Okay. And I just tell people to open this guy. You're going to match this back seam. I don't know if you can see, but where my stitches are. The back seam, this is where a good crease comes into play. The back seam. To the back crease. If you don't have a serger, you just can pin the back. You pin the back to the back. I can't really tell, but you put it inside and then you're going to pin it and then you match. You want to make sure all ends are matching. I probably should have closed these curtains, but it's okay. So this is what you have. It's in there. So I will, on my serger, take and lay this guy down. And I shrunk it down an inch so I don't have to stretch it too much, but I'm just going to sew around this guy. And you want to just make sure that you're matching all your... I might have to show this part again, but I'm just going to match them. And I'm taking and matching it as I go. If you have it pinned, it'll be a lot easier. Um, but my serger kind of cut.
cuts and goes along the way. And on my serger, I like to go around twice just to make sure I caught the edges. so hot in my sewing room. There we go. So I've done it once. I just do it twice, just to reinforce. It's kind of tricky sewing around the two corners. Or if your knit is real stretchy, sometimes you don't catch it all the way, all the time. this guy inside out and we've got our cowl. Yay! So now then I like to take and with your sleeve you're gonna take your cowl and your cowl is going to eat your sleeve. You match that bottom seam to that bottom seam. Okay. And then you just kind of sew around it. And I will only sew this once because usually you catch it. So sew all the way around, match the bottom seam to the bottom. can see. Woohoo! Only the other side. Okay. And like I said, if you have questions, you can email me or Facebook message me um, and I can see if I can help you. Um, this is just kind of like a good reminder if you've taken my class and you forgot how to do it that kind of gives you steps. your sleeves longer. I don't know if you can tell. Um, you can take if you wanted it longer. Um, measure from the edge of your sleeve to your wrist and then you could make it that long. So if it's 13 it's going to be 26 inches in length because it ends up being a tube and then you can taper it. So you would measure your wrist. Mine's five, so I would taper mine down to two and a half inches. But I hope this was helpful, and if you have questions, you can always email me and Guyana Jacknuck, or in my class, I like to say Guyana Chuck Norris. <laughs>